Packer and Durham on a Tuesday. A plethora of great guests. That includes our next one. Oh. And if you watched the no game doubt. last night where Florida State put on a show in Louisville, uh, like I said, by the time I got upstairs and jumped on the couch, it was 40 to 16. I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought this was going to be a close one. Yeah. But no, Knowles are red hot. Uh, with that said, Raekwon Gray joins us. He's been on with us before. First of all, Raekwon, congrats on the win last night. Uh, man, I tell you what, terrific. Get a grinder against North Carolina over the weekend. Short turnaround. Get on the flight. Let's go. Louisville team really talented. And, man, you guys came out of the gate smoking last night. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. You know, we knew it was going to be a dog fight. So, you know, we tried to come out prepared, you know, throw the first, first punch. So. Well, you threw the first okay. one and the second one and the third one and the fourth one. That's what you did last <laughs> night. I was kidding with Wes. I was on the radio last night till 7 o'clock and was excited. Matter of fact, I'm kind of mad at you because I really thought it was going to be a tight, close, fun game. And by the time I got up the steps and put got on the couch and got dinner, I turned it on. You guys are up 40 to 16. I was mad at you and Leonard and the rest of you guys because I was like, man, I was, I was ready for two hours of entertainment. Man, you guys just beat them senseless last night. But, man, you look good. Your team's really playing well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Raekwon, what, you guys have come back from the pause, and I mean shoot 71% last week against NC State. Pac mentions the grind against Carolina. I thought played with a lot of poise, kind of what we expect Florida State to do, to be honest. And then last night, deliver the road punch early. Um, not many teams come back from the pause and and find themselves that fast. What What transpired with you guys? Was it that veteran presence that you and several other guys bring to the table or the success you guys had last year what's driven this um you know when we went on uh the pause you know we tried to lock in more immensely than anything you know we wanted to, we know that we were a better team than we were playing like you know our coaches definitely <clears throat> did a great job of those days in practice of pushing us mentally you know to get us to a point where we we can function you know and play play games like this and you know execute the high level like we're doing up right now but, you know, I mean, I think we're a great team and we're just getting started, honestly. You know, we're playing well right now, but I think we can play better. And Coach Ham knows that also. So they're going to keep pushing us. And just, you know, they know it's in our team. So we just try to take advantage of our, of our break, you know, get prepared mentally than anything. Rick, when I think mm. you guys have now developed a championship DNA. And, I mean, it didn't happen last year, even though you, you won yeah. the league. It's been going on now for a long time with Leonard. He plays a lot of guys, whether you start, whether you're coming off the bench, you know, you're going to get quality minutes and you got to go play and play hard. I just think you guys are now wired that way. You know, in, in fact, if you have an off night, it's kind of shocking because you've got so many guys like we were kidding around earlier. I mean, MJ Walker has been a first team, all ACC player this year. He had two points last night. It didn't matter because he yeah. found 10 assists to get other people involved. And, hey, it's kind of a next man up mentality. And Polite didn't even dress last night. It, you would never know. You guys just keep coming at people in waves and waves. But talk about the DNA of this team. I mean, just, just the work ethic, the, the confidence that you have in each other. Uh, I mean, it really is kind of cool to watch you guys because you really are the definition of a true team. Um, I mean, that's, it starts with our coaches upstairs. You know, they do a great job of working with each other also as a team. So, you know, we see our coaches, you know, <clears throat> sacrificing so much for our team that it's kind of easy for us to do. You know, Coach Ham's an unselfish guy. You know, he's a confident guy. He likes to have fun. You know, he takes care of us. So we play so hard for him. That's really the main thing. You know, we want him to win a championship and get the respect he deserves. So, you know, we go out there and compete for, for him, honestly. You know, and it's kind of easy when you have this many guys in, in the locker room that's, you know, ready to share playing time, share the ball, and have fun. You know, we got a great group of guys, and I think that not everybody can do that with the high-character guys, and I think we have those guys, and it's it's pretty easy, honestly. Raekwon, as, as your career has, uh, has expanded here, there's a lot of things I want to dive into. One is we got into this conversation yesterday with uh, Seth Greenberg in regard to Virginia and red shirts. Uh, and we just talked with Tony Bennett about it in an interview we taped yesterday. Jay Huff and DeAndre Hunter were both redshirt guys, and obviously Huff's had a productive career at Virginia. Everybody knows what Hunter did. You redshirted at Florida State. What has that meant to your growth and and the movement of this team, quite frankly, that coincides with that? Um, I mean, it, it just gave me a year to, you know, kind of soak it all in, honestly, you know, to, to see the game at a slower pace, you know, see things that I didn't know coming out of high school, 
and just realizing, like, you know, I have to get better. I, honestly, I came out of high school. I wanted to play. Everybody wants to play out of high school. But, you know, that, that wasn't needed for me. I was young when I came in, 17 years old. You know, my mom and my coach discussed, you know, redshirted me. I, I hated it at first, but, you know, it definitely paid off in the long run. You know, I can, I can see the game from a different point, point of view now, kind of a coach's view, you know, just being on the sideline for a year and, and realizing, like, I, I can pick up things quickly. So, I mean, it definitely helped, you know, in my development there these past couple of years, and I'm, I'm thankful for it. My coaches, you know, I appreciate them for doing it. We have had uh, some fun talking about how hot you guys are shooting the basketball, whether it's from, from the field, from three, and specifically the free throw line. I mean, ever since you guys came off this pause, you go 11 of 11 from the line against NC State. You beat them by 100. Uh, the North Carolina game was a tremendous <laughs> basketball game on Saturday. You go 26 to 27. MJ finally missed one after you guys made the first 21. So I'm watching the game last night. You got this thing, cruise control. Oh, Quincy Ballard gets up there and throws two bricks from the line to end the game. Now, you guys have been making everything known to man. I mean, you've only missed one stake and free throw in two games. You only had missed one last night till Quincy got up there and went clank, clank. Uh, I know yeah. you guys take a great deal of pride in the little detail things, uh, but man, you guys are making everything. Did you give Quincy some grief putting those last two yeah. ones up against the wall? Because that looked like me out there shooting it. Yeah, we, you know, we joked around with him a little bit in the locker room saying like, uh, you know, you missed him. But I mean, he's a good free throw <laughs> shooter also too. You know, he shoots a high percentage in practice and he just ended up missing those two. But I think that, you know, we'll definitely keep shooting the ball well as long as we, you know, keep getting the reps and, you know, staying locked in. By the way, the way you guys right, are right. shooting the basketball, what's the whole The way you guys are shooting the basketball, does it not become kind of addictive that you see one go in? You're like, oh man, I got that shot mm. because I'm telling you, you guys have put on an exhibition and a clinic shooting the basketball here since you gotten back. Oh uh, yeah, most definitely. You know, you see one go in, the next person sees another one go in. So it's like the whole team is rolling in. It's kind of it's fun to play with because you know I pass the ball out to either White or like you know Sadar or uh, Ray Evans, and it's like All right, I know it's going in like. Sometimes I don't, I don't even go rebound because I feel like, you know, those guys are shooting the ball well and, you know, we're finding our shooters and our, our, our shot makers. All right. You've been around this program a long time. We're going to put your experience to the test here, okay? Yeah. You have to pick which one you like better. All right? You have to decide, is Malik Osborne's dunk last night Ooh. out of the half court or – Trent Forrest last year against Louisville in transition. <laughs> oh, man. All right, now wait, oh, wait. Now, before you answer, here's the review. Here's Osborne, a little punch right there off the wing. Get a look, a little Ooh. shot fake, fundamentally sound, crunches it. Okay? There's another look just in case. All right, so Oz, he's in there. Now, this is Forrest. Ooh. Jordan Wara. Hello. Oh, okay, man. Raekwon Gray. Now, this is uh, not – hey, listen now. I want to make sure you understand. This is not Coach Ham. This is not <laughs> CY. This is not Stan Jones. This is not Smitty. This is Packer and Durham. Yeah. No holes barred. Uh, Who wins? I'm going to have to go at Trent. You know, the environment was crazy. I mean, it was kind of like man on man, like face-to-face. So, it was it was ridiculous, like, seeing it from the angle. I saw that too. So, I mean, I, I definitely have to go at Trent with that one. You know, the other thing that comes into play here, too, and uh, here's the other thing. It's at home, and you got the place was filled, and not only that, the duty dunked it on is a baller, right? I mean, it it had had the imperfect ingredients, incredible dunk, the anticipation with the crowd. Look at the bench, they're losing their mind. Uh, But, you know, you do it in an empty gym on the road, and I'm not taking anything away from the dunk (laughs) last night because it was awesome. But it's a little different when you got the anticipation when you know the whole building is about ready to explode, right? It's just that's just a different yeah. feel, right? Different. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. But those are both awesome dunks, though. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Hey, um, real quick. Uh, last night, Sean McDonough and Jimmy Dykes talked. Jimmy Dykes said the the size you bring to the spot that you play. Uh, is that your biggest advantage? The fact you're a big guy who can really move got great quickness, understand the game, can handle it on the perimeter. There's just not many guys 6'8 and 255, 260 out there where you are, are there? Um, no, not really. I mean, people try to, you know, throw comparisons around all the time. But I, like I always say, I'm, you know, I'm myself, I'm Raekwon Gray. You know, I think that <clears throat> people haven't seen players like me, and that's why it's kind of a struggle to, you know, 
I guess match up with me. So I mean, I take advantage of you know any area I can on offense or defense. Honestly, so yeah. What's the most important thing for this team moving forward, other than staying healthy and playing games? Take that take that out as if that's going to happen. What's the one thing this team has to improve on right now? Um, just staying locked in the whole forty minutes, you know, and throughout each game, you know, I think sometimes we have slippage throughout the games where teams can make their run, and you know, we're not dominating the whole game. But I think if we take that out, you know, cut those areas out, I think we can, you know, compete with anybody in the country. You know, our coaches do a great job of, you know, making game plans for us, and we execute them pretty well. But you know, we have slippage throughout the games where you know teams can make that run. And maybe we're not up twenty points all the time. Maybe it's a you know five point game, and then they can go on a ten zero run, and we're down, you know, in a huge game that we need. So it's just staying locked in for the full forty minutes. And, you know, and I want to go back real quickly. That's why I thought the game against North Carolina on Saturday was really important, really mm-hmm. for both teams, but really for you guys coming back after the pause. I mean, the NC State game looked like me shooting, you know, shots out against the dogs in the backyard. Man, you couldn't miss, right? But that North Carolina game, you guys had to reach down deep and find a way to win. It was a grinder. North Carolina played well, but you guys emerged. And three minutes ago, could have gone either way. I really thought that game will help you down the road in terms of, hey, it's easy when you're blowing somebody out. It's another thing when you're playing a good opponent and you find ways to win late and deep, you know, re, you know, reach down deep and say, "All right, let's just figure this one out." I, I thought that win Saturday was really, really important for your team. Yeah, most definitely. You know, we pride ourselves on um, winning the, each period. So, you know, that last period we made a push. You know, I think our depth kind of got to them a little bit, warmer down a little bit. You know, we, we live for those moments in um, in the late games. You know, because we're, we're definitely training and conditioning you know, to execute late. And our coach does do a great job of, you know, putting us in positions to execute the game plan. So, you know, that's kind of what we build here at Florida State. And that's what we rely on, you know, late in the game, which is our depth and, you know, us wearing them down. Well, congratulations on the run here. Uh, you guys uh, obviously lost to Clemson before you went on pause. You get a chance to pay the Tigers back on Saturday at 3 o'clock in a ball game on ABC. And then a home game with Miami follows that. So, Keep it going, my man. You guys have been great to watch and uh, appreciate your time here today, Raekwon. No problem. Thank you for having me, man.